Welcome to the Tugly Magic channel and today we're looking at a reverse engineering of how the Chris Capehart trick was actually performed. Now we may get it right, we may get it wrong, but if you bear with us let's see what you think in the comments. So the first trick and in fact Chris performed two tricks very simple card tricks. The first one was a prediction and he introduced a bag and gave it to Teller. Eventually we find out it contains a prediction playing card. This is my prediction here. He then said to Teller, I want you to hold up uh, any number of fingers between one and four. And he does so. And that's a free choice. He can hold up any number of fingers and he holds up three. He then turns to Penn and says to him, do likewise, and he holds up two fingers. They then get a choice of a random number. They can either do the three and the two, which is 32, or they can do 23. Now they choose 23. A deck of cards, which has been in full view all along, is then dealt down and he says to Penn, deal the cards face up so we get to see them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and he asks him to put this card to one side. Eventually we see the card here, which happens to be the Ace of Clubs. Amazingly, it matches the card randomly dealt to. So let's take a look at how this particular effect worked. First of all, let's go back, rewind. When someone says to you hold up a number of fingers between one and four, well, that doesn't include the one, it doesn't include the four. So it will be in between one and four. So you can either hold up two fingers or three fingers. That's the only choices you actually get. So it's very limited. Now, Teller held up three, three fingers. He then said to Penn, is you do likewise, and he held up two. You normally find people do the opposite of what the other person has done, but it could have been the same. But let's take a look at this. First of all, three and two. That means that they could either have 32 or 23. Now they went for 23. So now we know the number could have been 32 or 23. That means that we need the false card that matches the prediction to be in both positions. Now that tells us that he must have been using a duplicate card. OK, and that's what we've done here. So let's mimic what they did in the performance. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. The next card was put to one side. That is actually the card that matches the prediction. OK, so we need our prediction match card in the 24th position. But what if they had chosen 32? Well, then you carry on dealing, okay, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, is this card here. Now I know some of you are probably thinking, well, wouldn't anyone notice there's two duplicate cards. No, because remember, when you're dealing, you're not looking for a particular card. If I said to you, look for an ace of clubs, when you deal down, you would spot that first one. But remember, at this point, we're just dealing cards down. But what happens if Penn and Teller both did two and two? 
then we've got 22 is what they've arrived at so 2 and 2 is 22 now this is why you may have noticed some of you may have spotted this but when Pen dealt the cards. Did you notice there was a joker in there? And that was there for a reason. Because if it had been 22, then when Pen started to deal 1, 2, Chris would have said to him, hang on, we don't want the joker. And we'll take that out. So it's 1, 2. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, and this card goes to one side, and it's now this card. So you can get to this in either way. Now, if that's twenty-two, then that also caters for the next one if they hold up three fingers which gives 33 because we got 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 so we get to it either way so any combination of those fingers would have forced that card and then that matched the prediction card so that was the first effect a very useful one and often used by magicians where you need to allow them to think that they're getting a randomized number of course they weren't on the second part of the routine that chris performed for pen and teller it was a great card trick he laid on the table the four kings to begin with with a deck that he doesn't cut, shuffle or put into any order, all he tells Penn and Teller is that he's placed the four queens that match the kings somewhere in the pack. He then says to Penn, tell me to stop at a particular number. And he goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. He tells him to stop there. The number four he could have had any and he goes one two three four and he puts the fourth card on top of the first king he then does it again ten nine pen stopped him here at number nine so he deals one two three four five six seven eight nine he puts the ninth card there these numbers are absolutely random finally he turns to teller and says you stop me and he goes ten nine and he happens to stop him on the same number as pen which is nine one two three four five six seven eight nine he places the ninth card there and teller has the last go and he stops him on 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And he stops him on 2. And he deals down 1, 2. And he's left holding 4 cards. He then finishes the trick by revealing that the 4 cards arrived at here at random just happens to be the ace of clubs the ace of hearts the ace of spades and the ace of diamonds but remember they were looking for the queens and they happen to have found the queen of clubs the queen of hearts the queen of spades and the queen of diamonds but as a kicker, he then takes the four cards that are left and he turns them up and they've got written on them some words. Something like this. You didn't fool me. Or something along those lines. The rest of the cards are gathered up. 
turned over and revealed that they're all blank cards. Now, I don't have blank cards, but that's how it ended. It's a fantastic card trick. How does it work? Well, there's no real secret to this. It is a self-working card trick. So all I'm going to do is tell you how they were stacked. By the way, you'll notice that he didn't use the same deck of cards that he did the first prediction trick with. It was a totally separate pack. And the reason he did that is because they were stacked in a certain order. So let me show you how this is done. You take a regular deck of cards or you could do what Chris did and have yourself uh, all blank playing cards or all a pack of jokers or something like that. You then deal down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the tenth card will be the ace. The eleventh card will be the queen. You do the same again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The tenth card will be the ace. The eleventh will be the queen and so on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The tenth card, the ace. The eleventh card, the queen. And finally, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, the ace and the queen, the eleventh card. There's a stack. You will have four cards left over. which go at the bottom. Now I've put four blank, but normally you just have the, the remainder of the pack on there. And as long as you keep them in that order, they're good to go. And you lay the kings out. And as long as you do the reverse count, so you go 10, 9, 8, 7, whichever number they stop on, 7 is what you then deal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the seventh card. That will always be the matching queen. The top card of the pack will be the ace. We'll do that again. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Let's say they stop on five. So you deal one, two, three, four, five. This will be the queen. The top card will be the ace and so on, so forth. It's a fantastic trick. It's quite an old routine. So uh, magicians out there will be familiar with this self worker. And this is why I find it hard to believe that Penn and Teller were not fooled by that. I think it was a case of they were good friends from years gone by and it was a gesture of friendship that they let him win a trophy because it is such a simple and known card trick and most magicians will know that it, it featured a stack of cards and was probably self-working. But that's how he actually fooled Penn and Teller. Practice and enjoy.